Good morning, St. Paul's Wallingford, and a good more, very good morning to those of you who are joining us for the very first time via YouTube. My name is Shensia Jarrett, and I'm the seminarian here at St. Paul's Wallingford. Today, I would like to invite you into a meditation. This meditation is structured through a series of reflection. The first reflection will have a scripture, a selection of scripture readings. And after the scripture is read, we will then transition into a series of questions. After each question, I invite you to a brief moment of silence. Please do not worry, the silence will not be too long. Before I start the meditation, I ask that you get comfortable wherever you are. Spend a few seconds feeling comfortable, whether that means laying down, sitting in your favorite chair, or standing, and even pacing the room. Whatever brings you comfort during this time where so many Americans are at a state of anxiety, which is a very worthy state of anxiety, I ask you to spend some time seeking comfort. Let us begin. In today's gospel reading, John chapter 11, verses 1 through 45, we witness that in times of sickness and death, Jesus encourages believers to trust in God's words. God's word in today's gospel reading is God's glory. The heaviness or weight of death is too hard for humanity to bear alone. Therefore, Christ walks with us and invites us to witness God's glorious power in the midst of sickness and death, in those very sad moments of grief and sorrow. God walks with us. The thought of illness in today's lectionary reading gives voice to the grief and sorrows in which so many Americans face today and so many people throughout the world have already known. This source of sadness and grief results from the COVID-19 virus. Yet, we know through scriptures that many have dealt with illnesses and even death. And in coping with such things, we see that people, believers, appeal to the divine. They appeal to the divine for medical intervention. Many, as we see in today's scripture, they ask the Lord for healing. And others outside of scripture have asked the Lord to guide the hands of the doctors, the nurses, the administrators, and everyone in the field of medical services. They ask God to guide their hands as they care and administer medical intervention. In today's gospel reading, Jesus takes on both the role as a medical provider and as the divine. Let us begin with reflection one, verses one through five. Now a certain man was ill Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. 
So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, The illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory. So the Son of God may be glorified. The last time I preached, I discussed the word glory. In Hebrew, as a reminder, the word glory refers to a measure of weight. The more honorable something is, the greater the weight of its glory. Therefore, we ascribe the highest weight or measure of honor to God through words of praise. And we refer to God as glorious or even God's glory. Here again in John chapter 11, when Jesus heard that Lazarus was ill, he replied, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it's for God's glory, so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. If you were Mary or Martha, how would you respond if Jesus said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so the Son of God may be glorified through it. Would you feel disappointed? Or simply confused? Please take a few seconds to reflect on that. If you were Mary or Martha, how would you feel in response to Jesus' comment? So many people around the world are asking the similar question as it relates to Christ. Verse 6, accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Why would Jesus wait for two additional days in spite of knowing his beloved friend, Lazarus, was ill. I invite you to, once again, a few seconds of silence to think about it. Why would Jesus wait two additional days knowing that Lazarus was ill? Reflection 3, verses 9 through 11. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, 
but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about death, but they thought that he was merely referring to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I'm glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him? The thought and actual encounters of death leave a sense of heaviness for both the deceased and their loved ones. People mourn the loss of a friend, a lover, and in some places, a parent. As a result of the COVID-19, so many people are dealing with this heaviness. So many people are even dealing with this heaviness who may not have a loved one to grieve them today. On March 27th, the city of New York has reported over 500 deaths in less than one month. Across the world, thousands have died. Our world is in a state of heaviness. And so many worshiping communities are praying that God continues to bless the hands of the doctors, the administrators, the nurses, the scientists, all those who give care. We ask that God continues to bless their work as they seek to create a cure for victims and to save lives across the world. If you could provide words of encouragement to a victim of COVID-19 and their loved ones and medical providers, what would you say? I'll give you a minute to think about this. What would you say to a victim of COVID-19, to a medical provider, and to loved ones? How would you encourage them? What kind words would you share with them? If you want to jot it down, you can. Fifteen more seconds. Reflection four, verses seventeen through twenty two. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tube for four days. 
Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, and Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. I assume that many of us resonate with Martha's statements to Jesus as she mourns the loss of her brother. Maybe if Jesus had immediately traveled to see Lazarus and did not wait two days, Lazarus could possibly have been alive. Yet interestingly, after Lazarus' death, Martha still remains hopeful in her petition to Jesus. She says, I repeat, even now, God will grant you, Jesus, whatever you ask of him. Does Martha know something special about Jesus? Based on Martha's statement and the current state of COVID-19's pandemic, there are numerous people petitioning the divine. They know that Jesus has the power to give life and to heal. So many are desiring the same thing in which Martha does and in which Martha courageously acts of Christ. If you were Jesus, or a minister, or a medical provider, how would you respond to Martha's statement? How would you respond if Martha said, if you were here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. So if you were Jesus, I repeat, how would you respond to Martha? Reflection 5, verses 23 to 27. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Friends in Christ, how would you respond to Jesus' question? Do you believe in Christ? Do you believe that Christ is the resurrection and the life and those who believe in him, even though they die, will live and everyone who lives and believes in him will never die? Is not death a real thing? Has real feelings? 
of sorrow and sadness, the same for illnesses? Perhaps we look back to Reverend Deanne's sermon, which focused on Jesus and Nicodemus. Jesus says to Nicodemus, in order to receive salvation or to have eternal life, you must be born again, born of the water and of the spirit. So I ask again, how would you respond to Jesus's question? Do you believe? I'll give you a minute because this will take us into a state of reflection. For those who are baptized within the Episcopal Church, it may even take you back to that moment of your baptism if you have memory of it. What do we believe in? Reflection six, verses 28 to 33. She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and he is calling for you. And when she said it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus did not yet come to the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The people who were there in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her. They thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. But when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. Similar to Martha, Mary addresses Jesus saying, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not die have died. Question. For a second time, let us reflect on this address. If you were a minister, if you were Jesus or a medical provider, how would you respond to Mary's question? How would you respond to Mary's statement to Christ? the way in which she addresses Jesus, if you were Jesus. Let me clarify that for you. If you were Jesus, how would you respond to a second person saying to you, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have not died. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Reflection seven, verses 34 to 35. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in the spirit and deeply moved. He said, 
where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. Jesus responds to Mary and Martha's statements with tears. The son of man was greatly disturbed and deeply moved by the ways in which death hurts people. Jesus cries with his friends. Reflection 8, verses 38 through 40. Then again, Jesus, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone, Martha. The son, the, Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he had been here for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Again, Jesus informs believers that they will see the glory of God. And Jesus is adamant that faith can do the impossible for those who are willing to believe. What are some of the ways in which we can encourage those who are enduring illnesses and even death, especially as it relates to COVID-19? How can we encourage them while practicing safety and inspirational provisions. I repeat, what are some of the ways in which we can encourage victims of COVID-19 through safe and inspirational provisions. How about sharing a Bible verse with a friend or a victim over the phone? through sending emails or even text messages or even letters. Other ways in which we can do this on a daily basis is actually by complying with safe social distance practices. Most importantly, praying, praying for those victims, and praying for their loved ones and family members. Our final reflection, reflection nine, verses 41 through 45. So they took the stone away and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the people, therefore, who had come with Mary had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Let us close with a prayer. This prayer is what I call the Lazarus prayer. Jesus's weeping prayer for a friend.
This prayer may also be found in the bulletin. I'll give you a few seconds to find it. Father, we thank you for having heard our prayers throughout the years. We know that you always hear us, but today we pray for the sake of the victims of COVID-19, medical providers, and their loved ones, that they may continue to believe in Jesus's eternal love and believe that Jesus weeps and walks with them in the midst of this pandemic. Amen. 